good afternoon uh, friends now is it okay yes sir yes sir okay so yesterday we had our board meeting and we declared our results uh this quarter is the best ever result declared by uh jindal sir and uh, this has been happening now for last few quarters that every time we set a benchmark and we ourselves go and jump over it uh this is primarily a culmination of as i say a lot of efforts so now we do have a momentum we have an order book we have the capacity we have the market and we have all the other resources which are required to be able to do uh, perform in a very coordinated manner <clears throat> so highlight of the result stand alone top line rupees 4786 crores ebitda rupees 890 crores pvt rupees 619 crores pat 452 now when you compare it with the comparable quarter last year which is 31st march or 31st december 22 look at the results there there was a note there was an accounting entry for which uh, there was an other income of 113 so that is not there in this time so when you make that comparison you will see that the improvement or the development has been even more steeper than what the numbers tell you <clears throat> if it are percentage from 12.9 a year ago now it is 18.6 in the current quarter <clears throat> likewise if you see the consolidated results uh ebitda of 1030 gross income 5697 pvt 700 pat 512 so again that indicates that our subsidiaries are doing well especially our abu dhabi facility is doing very well we have a good order book uh, stable performance courage very good <coughs> and a very important factor that has been supporting us over the last few quarters that the commodity prices have kind of stabilized or the progress is everywhere we are seeing that probably it has a little downward trend so that gives us or puts us into a very very good position turning our attention to the <coughs> distribution of our income which should give you a clear sense of the robustness or the quality of our income the stability of our income water sector approximately uh 68% oil and gas 28% uh industry and other sectors 4 to 5% <clears throat> also the diversification between the domestic and the export very well balanced domestic around 60% export balance 40 So if you look at the matrix of the kind of industries that we address and the export versus domestic this gives us a lot of comfort in terms of the revenue quality it is not a spike it is not one particular sector or it is one particular so it's not a flash in the pan kind of other thing this is something why i am highlighting because we paid particular attention to this matrix which is the quality of the or the robustness of our top line revenue <clears throat> look at the debt profile even the turnover etc has gone up jso net debt has come down from 4200 to 3900 on a total consolidated gso basis it has come down from 565600 to 5400 
the institutional debt has come down from 4,900 to 4,700. So what this again tells you that after the m &A activity that we carried out for Satwara, which added a term loan of about 1,000 crores to the balance sheet, the debt <coughs> is being managed well. Out of the total debt of long-term debt, we have only 1,800, out of which this 1,000 is on account of Satwana, which is a very recent m &A activity. So the debt continues to stay within control. Working capital utilization will continue to uh, go down because primarily all the cash that would get generated, we hope to generate a lot of cash, would be used for routine capex and reduction in working capital. We do not have any other M&A on the cards. We are working on Capacity, bond, uh, capacity, you can say, building by de-bottling and capacity utilization at Satwana because uh, we see there is a lot of headroom there with a marginal uh, capex and de-bottling. We can do capacity balancing and thereby enhance the entire capacity. So that's one area where the capex is going. We are also putting up a new coke oven battery, which is taking some uh, capex. We are also trying to enhance our capacity for seamless pipes in Nasik. If you see Nasik, currently we have one piercer. Going forward, it has got two lines. One line is seven inches and below. For, I'm talking about seamless uh, tubes, carbon seamless tubes. One line is then above seven inches and it goes up to 16 inches. Again, what we are doing is we are trying to de-bottle neck that, create, put additional piercers so that the two lines work independently so that in seamless, then in Nasik we will have a dedicated line to seven, for 7 inches and below and a dedicated line for uh, 7 inches and above up to 16 inches. This will enhance the capacity. This will improve the productivity. This will improve the market reach. And through this and a combination of different diameters of double bead also, which is uh, dual bead, one bead on top, one bead, so that's a much stronger weld as well as spiral. We are looking at possibility that if we use the, use the right grade of uh, steel material, can we provide again a solution for hydrogen transportation? Because what we are seeing is that hydrogen may become a important factor for the clean energy and therefore we are trying to ready ourselves besides addressing the market to be absolutely ready for this important segment and that is where the seamless uh, having a dedicated line for the seven inches and above and one dedicated line for below plus these would help <clears throat> by the way we also have stainless steel we can do large dia stainless steel going up to 40 inches in diameter and on the lower side we can go up to as low as half. So with all this we are wanting to create a full bouquet of products which can go into hydrogen transportation whenever that comes. Uh, now moving from the financial highlights to the business outlook, I think we have a momentum. We are likely to close the year on a high. The order book is good, 1.4 billion. We already talked about it. That's a sweet spot for us under the enhanced capacity. And 
usually the fourth quarter is always the best quarter for Jindal Saab. We hope we will be able to repeat that uh, this year as well. <clears throat> so we have our momentum, we have a good order big book, we have a stable commodity price. CapEx already we have spoken that there is nothing major except for capacity balancing at uh, the Satwana Hare Samundram plant, a coconut factory, and this uh, uh, dual double line for uh, Nasik in seamless so that the capacity goes up. Rest uh, <clears throat> let me now turn my attention to the market outlook. The way things are happening, first we definitely are getting concerned and we are watching the developments in Red Sea and around. Because we do note that Iran is kind of going all over first the hit north. Now they are trying to hit south. So, U.S. is retaliating. So, we just are seeing complexities developing in that part of the world. Hamas continues to be under huge pressure. Israel is not relenting, unlikely to relent. Probably the world has now reconciled to it. And therefore, other than now any negotiations, uh, different people have different reactions. Some are supporting, some are waiting, and some are retaliating in their own way. That, how will it play out, we'll have to wait and see. But assuming nothing major goes wrong, we see oil capex to pick up. both in India as well as in this part of the world. India, as we see now, deep sea, the KG basin, especially in the Bay of Bengal, there's a lot of activity, uh, both the PSUs as well as the private sector uh, improving uh, their uh, production, exploration, expanding their activity. So, overall we see that the demand for pipes for oil and gas sector should be there, should be robust. Water segment has been a very good uh, initiative, very good opportunity for us. This uh, Jal Jeevan mission has given a very robust and a sustainable demand for pipes of all categories. Our large diameter pipes, our DI pipes, our STP, we have benefited on all fronts. And the way things are, <coughs> in all probability, there will be political stability and continuity at the center, even after general election. So we expect that momentum to continue because still the oil, uh, the water grid has not reached the desired level in the country. There are pockets where still it needs to be. There are pockets where it's there, but still a lot to go. So we see in the short term definitely this water segment, the water demand for pipes in the water segment will continue to remain. Uh, very high. Two more small points I would like to touch before I turn my attention to questions. NTPC now finally after a lot of persuasion we have been able to uh, get the Solicitor General to begin his argument. Currently the case is partly heard, that's good news because then there is not going to be any change of roster or change of judge. And it appears that now the argument is going to uh, end soon because once you have a party heard, 
judge has given two dates, so you will have to finish it. So that's good news. Now we are definitely seeing that there is a movement and there should be an end. So far, the last uh, order that the judge passed, he has taken note where the Solicitor General has said he has substantially completed his arguments and probably would need a small session of about an hour or so and then he will end his uh, arguments. Uh, after that, it will be an opportunity for us to rebut. So far, whatever arguments that we have heard from him, uh, we feel that we are on a very strong ground. And we also feel that now there should be movement and once all of these are argued very well at the High Court level itself, probably then the next steps towards a final adjudication uh, would be now simpler and should not take very long. <coughs> the last thing that I want to talk about is the joint venture. The general hunting joint venture, we have completed the uh, API audit, uh, both rounds. It has gone very well. We are likely to get the API license in the next month or so. Likewise, the premium connection, it doesn't require API, it's just a license from hunting. Uh, all training or uploading trials, etc., are done. The final agreement will be inked any day. So basically now the JV will be in business commercial activity soon. The kind of orders that are lined up, we expect that in the, uh, you know, year 24-25, which will be technically the first year of operation because we are assuming that during this quarter we would get the API license and all that, the JV would have a profitable operation. The level of planning, the level of detailing, and the way we have managed our capex and costs, it gives us a lot of confidence, it gives us a lot of comfort that in the first full year of operation itself, the JV would be profitable and would contribute. Anyway, the JV is the financial sector, everything is independent, we have a separate bank line, so there is no drain on JSOC or any of the subsidiary. But on a standalone basis also, the company would be, the JV would be profitable in year 24, 25, which is its first year of operation. So far, the trials have been successful. <coughs> Results are good. People have witnessed it. Clients are excited. And we expect that we will penetrate the market pretty soon. So with these initial opening remarks, uh, financial results and outlook. Uh, let me stop here and take a few questions from uh, all of you. Thank you so much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Question is from the line of Mr. Abhishek Maheshwari from Sky Ridge Wealth Management. Please go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, I'm audible. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Tell me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, Glad to be back. Uh, sir, so first question is regarding your exports to Saudi Arabia. Uh, I'm assuming a bulk of your uh, you know, revenues come from, a, lo a whole lot of revenues come from Saudi Arabia. So, and this situation in Red Sea, uh, it's not as if we can take, you know, Cape of Good Hope route, right? But uh, we can take the Persian Gulf route to uh, export our products to Saudi, right? Is that helping you or... Uh, uh, are you seeing some pressure on exports due to this? Uh, to classify that a bulk of substantial is coming from Saudi Arabia would not be the... If you look at the total pie of my revenue and the portion that has come from Saudi Arabia, yes, it is an important contract, but it's not that uh, we are very, very highly dependent and still the Saudi Arabia contract is... Uh, very well running into the next year as well. So it's a large contract, uh, total 3,000 crores, but split into two years. As far as uh, 
Transportation of pipe through ships are concerned. So far, there have been no incidents. And uh, unless, uh, you know, the, the guys become reckless, pipes are of a very little consequence to anybody. It's not oil and gas. It's not a commodity. Uh, no pirate would be able to do anything with the pipe anyway. So we don't expect that we are on the target, but if the entire route is disturbed, then as I already said, yes, that is a risk and this is a concern. Uh, no, sir, I understood your point, but uh, just wanted, for the sake of clarity, is there an alternative route to get the uh, goods to Saudi? Because there is one route that is Red Sea and there is there is other route to Persian Gulf, you know, to Dubai. So, is there an alternative you are considering this? Yeah, we can see. Okay, Saudi Arabia, if you see, is kind of a very large peninsula. It has got, uh, you know, the uh, water channels on both sides. So, suppose if one channel gets completely blocked or disturbed, then the alternate route would be available. But the proximity of each other is so much that if Iran is the one who is, uh, you know, doing all this, then it is very unlikely that they will uh, hit one and not um, mess around with the other channel as well. Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. Uh, so, and your, see, Cape of Good, good Hope doesn't come here. Cape of Good Hope is on the tip of the South Africa. So you don't need to go to South Africa anyway if you have to go to Saudi Arabia from India. Right. Understood. Uh, sir, my second question is regarding this QIP that you are planning, 1000 crore. If the tailwind in our, is in our favor, we are generating a lot of cash, uh, working capital requirement is coming down. So, just think, understand the whole purpose of uh, raising so much money right now. Okay. Uh, let me put that uh, in the right perspective. At this point of time, we have just keeping all the enabling provisions ready. So that, based on the guidance that we get from the market analysts, merchant bankers, other experts, if required, we would be able to close this transaction within a short frame of, short time frame, say about uh, three weeks to four weeks. But, the QIP has not been put on the calendar as yet, and therefore, uh, you know, at this point of time, besides saying that we are in a state of readiness for a QIP, anything else would be speculative in nature because we have not, we don't have any date as yet. Second. The use of the QIP also has been well spelled out in our board resolution, in our uh, communication to everywhere. So we have made it very clear that the QIP would essentially move towards reducing the debt burden. Essentially then the (coughs) debt Whenever that QIP happens, let me just caveat it, I'm not putting a date at the end. Whenever that happens, the Sakwara loan would be completely repaid. So it will be used for the reduction of the debt on the company. But when it happens, as I told you, we are keeping the thing ready. Uh, There are too many uh, factors. There is a market factor, there is a general election, there is a requirement. So at this point of time, is the company in dire need of that fund in any manner? The answer is no. And therefore, we will time it very properly based on expert advice and it would be used whenever it is done essentially to reduce the debt. Any other discussion at this point of time on QIP, I think, is speculative. Let me see if I get this right. Uh, From your perspective, in maybe coming years, there could be substantial growth which can come in and you want to be in a state of readiness ki okay if that growth does come in where you can see 15 20% growth in revenues you are in a position to 
you know, uh, meet all your working capital requirements so that you do not have to forego that growth. Am I getting it right? That could be one of the fallout, yes. The whole idea of dressing up the balance sheet, the whole idea of reducing the debt burden, lightening of the balance sheet is obviously to, uh, you know, be in a state of readiness where the financial health, the capital structure is such that it can support uh, rapid growth. That Yes, that is one of the uh, definite benefits that we might achieve out of that. Okay. And that's it. Thank you so much. That's all from me. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to one or two, pa two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. Our next question is from Mr. Kirtan Mehta from BOB Capital Markets. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, sir, for giving this opportunity and congratulations for sort of good set of numbers. <coughs> First question was about the hunting oil JV. We would be basically getting the API approval sometime this week and first year would be the f operation. I just wanted to understand in terms of the scale of operations that could develop there eventually. What could be the capacities, revenues, and sort of the... Capacities, it can go up to 70,000 uh, 70,000 joints per annum. When you say joints, it is both the pin end and the coupling end. That is called a joint. So 70,000. Basically, if you talk in terms of revenue, it has a potential of approximately $100 million. If the market size is good and we are able to hit all the value added segments. Because, you know, coupling also, you can go for 13 chrome, you can go for higher Plus, you can go some space grade. Our effort would be to go for our high, high value add products <coughs> and, uh, you know, enter the club of the JFP and the Sumitomo and uh, Tenaris, those guys. If you are able to enter that, then it's a profitable business. So, a top line of 100 is what this JV has a potential. <coughs> and when we look at sort of the India market, what percentage of the market would we be able to sort of address with this? Would it be 5-10% or it's sort of no, a large let me, uh, in Let me, in terms of the product range, we can address the entire product range of premium connections in India and most part of the world. Because this is the only facility which can go right from Two seven eight inches up to 36 inches. Obviously, the higher size includes connectors, but it does the same function. So, it can cover the entire range. So, product-wise, we are very versatile, we are very capable, and we can address. How much we can achieve in terms of the market uh, penetration, uh, Market share, we have to pan out. As I told you, so far we have enough orders where we are going to be busy and turn profitable in year one because we already have received all the pre qualification See, in such segments, one critical milestone is receiving the pre-qualification. Based on <coughs> the track record and experience of hunting and general, the JV has already been qualified to bid for regular tenders in ONGC, in the uh, major. We are also working with uh, other private sector players like Keynes, Reliance, etc. There they call it the vendor qualification. So currently a lot of pre-qualifications have already been are in place and uh, the vendor qualifications also for all major players in India are in place. We are using the hunting network to try and address the export market as well in terms of the vendor qualifications. So we think that we are making the right start for the GV. And because of the domestic production, would we have the cost advantage over the imports? 
दिस प्रोजेक्ट इज कम्प्लीटली अंडर द रिजीव ऑफ आत्म निर्भर भारत so not only that we have a cost advantage and income tax advantage because you know there is a potential rate for perpetuity we also expect that the government of india might give us the right kind of protection as long as we are able to uh, satisfy the demand uh, we may even have some protection as it is in other uh, products under this aatmanirbhar bharat scheme but obviously the cost advantage is there that is one of the uh, unique advantage of this not only for the domestic market but also for the international market understood sir just one more question in terms of sort of a more of a medium term sort of the outlook so currently we are primarily dependent on water and oil and gas sector and we are trying to develop our capabilities into the hydrogen sector are there any other segments that we would like to target over five year to sort of looking at a five year horizon or are we sort of comfortable that these two segments gives us enough opportunity to grow our revenue base from here okay one area where the stainless and seamless can go is the industrial sector because tubeless products for fluid transportation drilling is all oil gas water Uh, and all kinds of things the other one is tubular products are used in industrial sector where it is used as a heat exchanger <coughs> boiler tube uh, sugar industry refineries so that's the industrial sector which we club all and make it into an industrial sector so that's one area where we can but uh, there the demand would not be so high that it can absorb our entire capacity so the dependence on the water as well as on the oil and gas and this part of uh, will be there definitely in the short to medium term till hydrogen becomes something very big <clears throat> right just last follow up in terms of the sort of the water sector while we are primarily focus into the india at this point is it possible to leverage our expertise to basically target the export market in the water segment as well and would we be competitive with the export market there our uh, abu dhabi facility is completely catered to the export market not a kg of a di5 from abu dhabi is coming into india so abu dhabi is a completely if you see in our parlance the way you say export market means country other than india are getting addressed by abu dhabi they are doing very well uh last day also the earlier question was about saudi uh, that the water pipeline so we are addressing wherever we get an opportunity in di now we have so much of, we have close to 7 and a half uh, lakh tons of capacity in uh, di in india but uh, since we are strategically located in west and south uh, we are busy with the indian demand is there there is little requirement for us to export uh, di pipes abroad except for small diameters thank you sir for this clarification thank you thank you thank you so much the next question is from the line of priya equitas investment please go ahead ma'am thank you for giving the opportunity uh my first question is in terms of the interest cost uh, what would be the break up of the forex impact and the uh, debt forex uh, the forex impact in this quarter financial charges are hardly anything okay and uh, in the other income we've seen a substantial increase on a quarter on quarter basis what would that constitute of other income significant increase no if you compare with the last quarter there was a 113 crore of revaluation accounting entry for rpf which is not here this time oh, no on so the okay hold 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 no other income is what 60 40 what is it just give me a second let me have a look at it because it, i don't think it's a thing the other top line of some 4000 crores it is a uh, two digit other income 
Uh, and in terms of UAE, uh, what would be an execution period be for our order book? You are talking about Saudi Arabia. I told you it's uh, next year. It will spill into next year. It will complete in the next year. Oh, the entire would be next year. Okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Bye. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashutosh Garud from Ambed GPC PMS. Please go ahead, sir. Hello, sir. Yeah, am I audible? Yes. Yes, I can. Just a little louder and a, a little slower, please. Great. So, I just wanted to understand the broad, uh, I, I, I mean, cycle of our industries. Historically, we have seen that this industry has been fairly cyclical. And if I see the results in the previous, in the recent few quarters, we have on the EBITDA level, Margins, we have recorded uh, very, very good margins, which are historically very high, especially in the current quarter. We have recorded margins which are at a decade high kind of level. So just wanted some clarification from the next two, three year journey for ourselves. From a margin perspective, what would you like to guide on EBITDA level? And from a top line growth perspective, uh, given the kind of utilization levels you are, maybe you can throw some more light on the what kind of utilization levels you have in the sub-segments apart from just being in uh, steel pipes, maybe there are other sub-segments which you can define for us to give us some clarity over the next two, three years journey from growth and the EBITDA margin, sustainability of the same. Yeah, you have asked multiple questions. Let me try and take it one by one. Hey, in terms of capacity, as you know, we are improving capacity and we are working at a high capacity utilization, but we have enough headroom where the whole operations can grow without a significant step jump. So that's the first point. Second, you asked about a future outlook. Next, six months looks strong because we already have an order book we have. There are uh, deal pipeline is healthy. The six months look very strong. But uh, beyond that, it is something like we will have to win the contracts. It is still not. So we are hopeful that we will have a good or a robust demand. But the confidence level that we have over the next six months is higher than beyond that. <clears throat> so that would, uh, uh, that should give you some guidance about, because see the good part is that uh, the Indian economy, if it continues to grow at a robust pace as a leading world economy, uh, we are one of the four sectors. So we do expect that we should get that uh, uh, benefit. We should have the support of the growing demand in a growing economy. Right. So uh, when you said you are operating at a high level, high utilization level, what is the utilization level currently? No, see, I have always maintained that percentage would be misleading primarily because boilerplate size, and actual production in terms of tonnage, how it is measured, uh, there is very little. But let me put it this way. We can grow the business easily by 20% without any significant challenge. So from the current level of, uh, say, 20,000 crores, uh, we can go up to 25,000 crores without any significant capital. You can grow up to, sorry, I missed the number. 25,000 crores of top line without any significant okay. capital. Oh, thank you, sir. Thanks for this. Thank you so much. Next question is from the line of Shweta Dikshit from Systematic Group. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, 
good evening everyone uh, thank you for the opportunity and congratulations on a good set of numbers uh, i just wanted to ask uh, the volume numbers for the quarter does this include the, the abu dhabi volumes as well or is, is it just from indian operation no probably we have to repeat your question you are not very audible the volume numbers reported for the quarter uh, around 442000 uh, tons uh, does this include uh, this is uh, consolidated volume numbers which include abu dhabi as well no no this is stand alone this is stand alone uh, could you throw some light on the uh, abu dhabi uh, volume numbers for the quarter abu dhabi volume numbers for the quarter uh normally they do 2 million right so for the quarter they would be doing uh, 40 close to 50000 60000 so that's 63000 63000 and 63000 metric tons for this quarter okay yeah today the run rate is upward of uh, 2 lakh so roughly 50 to 60 per quarter is an average run rate and we are doing well we have a sustained order book for that all right uh, the next question uh, as you said that uh, orders uh, are already lined up uh, in terms of the uh, general hunting jv for the premium connections uh, product uh, could you quantify any any uh, any number on the on the uh, existing order that are uh, lined up for that uh please allow me to declare commercial production first and then i'll talk about order book Okay sir. Uh that's it on my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Mr. Ram Modi from Prabodha Lilathar. Please go ahead sir. Sir I just wanted to check uh, what is are the margins the same as for the new orders what we are bidding or winning the uh, because i believe there may be some high margin orders which we would be executing during next two quarters but are the new orders coming at the same margin okay let me address that yes that is one thing that um, one of the earlier uh, questions was but see this 18.6% of ebitda margin uh, how sustainable is it uh, no we expect this to settle down a little bit but uh it will definitely not go as below as we have been doing in the past so 18.6 can settle down a little bit because some of the orders we are getting the advantage of the stabilizing commodity prices so either with a lead or a lag that will settle down so 18% should settle down but i think it should be uh let me not speculate because it, it relates to the pricing strategy but i think it should be enough for me to tell you that it will not be as low as uh, 12 13 14 that was there but we expect some settling down of 18.6 okay and uh, sir what is the quantity of the order book uh, we have around 1.45 billion dollars of order uh, on the domestic yes. uh, what is the volume of the order book Uh, the quantity is about 14 lakh tons. 14 lakh tons. So the net NSR would be around thousand dollars for us for a price. Those calculations you can do. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, lastly, sir, in terms of uh, how is our stainless steel pipe uh, division doing? Because we do not have a breakup there. But how are the volumes and how are the margins and realization there? it is likely to pick up significantly it is doing well because there uh, our major achievement in stainless steel segment has been so far uh, getting pre qualifications into e industries like nuclear space defense getting into higher segments like super duplex uh, and those moving away from the base grade of uh, technical power that is as it is called the 304 and 316 so those are the significant developments that we have achieved now we expect that there should be a steep growth in the market our uh, instrumentation queue we have made some very good progress uh, those are again the focus on our stainless steel business is to focus on uh, high value added products
ओके ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम मिस्टर लाइन ऑफ मिस्टर विपुल कुमार शाह फ्रॉम सुमांगल इन्वेस्टमेंट प्लीज गो हेड सर हाई सर माई क्वेश्चन रिलेट टू कैपेसिटी ऑफ सतवाना सो वट इज द एडिशनल कैपेसिटी वी आर गेटिंग फॉर दिस एक्विजिशन एंड हाउ मच टाइम विल हैव टू विल इट टेक टू रीच दो कैपेसिटीज ओके करेंटली वी आर एट टू लैक टर्म्स पर एनम विथ ऑल द डी बॉटल बॉटल लेकिंग एंड Uh, improvement and efficiencies it is likely to go up to 2.5 the time taken to go from 2 to 2.5 in terms of capacity will be close to a uh, year to 15 months currently we are at a high capacity utilization of uh, over 80% at satwana right sir yes okay okay sir and uh, regarding this hunter jv uh, what type of capacity utilization we can expect in first year sir uh, please allow me to first declare the uh, commercial production then we can talk about it because the compliance guy sitting in front of me are saying don't make speculative statements okay sir thank you and all the best to make up uh, because unless i am commercial production if i am in commercial once i am in commercial production i would be able to talk about business and i will be able to very openly uh, talk about business okay sir thank you <clears throat> thank you the last question is from the line of de desai from nivesha investment advisors please go ahead uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers sir uh i just wanted to understand on the competitiveness uh, of our products so uh, basically uh, like like you all know china is opening up and uh, that could be a an intense competition that we might ex- uh, experience from china so please, how please hello excuse me would you just repeat your question uh, you were not very audible what what are you wanting to look at hello am i audible now Haji, uh, well, just repeat your question, please. Yeah, so I wanted to understand on the uh, Chinese competitiveness. Uh, so basically, China is also opening up, and there is a you know a lot of uh, intense competition that we might experience from China. So I just wanted to understand the how competitive uh, we are in terms of quality as well as pricing uh, when we compare we uh, compare us with the Chinese uh, players in the market, okay. uh, especially uh, in the export market. Understood. China is not a competition to us at all primarily because quality wise we are far superior we know uh, cost wise they are much cheaper but now in india there are no chinese products which are allowed most of the other countries also who are quality conscious are uh banning chinese so basically we don't have any competition for china because there are two different markets one is a quality conscious market where we are very competitive because we compete with the other indian peers and the europeans and there is a you can say less quality conscious market uh, where we don't even bother going because that's what that's where china is so we don't see much competition with china uh, because we we address different kind of markets correct sir uh, so sir also this miss those numbers you mentioned about the segment uh, sector by progression of our uh, revenues can you please repeat those numbers okay uh, of of revenue so re- uh, you mentioned that uh, water sector was around 68% uh, oil and gas yes. was so i just need yes. those Okay, water sixty-eight, oil and gas twenty-eight, industrial sector around four to five, okay. domestic sixty, export forty. Correct, sir. Uh, that's very helpful. Uh, also, sir, uh, in terms of uh, order book, uh, 
how is our order book uh, bifurcated in terms of oil and gas and uh, water and also in terms of domestic and exports mm -hmm. hold domestic and exports uh, order book for uh, domestic is about 65 35 export 35 domestic 65 okay. and you looking for water versus oil and gas just one second okay same around you can take it 70 70 30 broadly or uh, 70 25 five leave it for industrial sectors the order book is also following the same pattern as our revenue correct sir uh, that's very helpful also sir so uh uh, in the exports market, uh, where are we seeing demand from? Uh, are we seeing it from the Saudi Arabia, uh, so uh, MENA region, or uh, we are also seeing? Water segment, lot of demand from MENA, oil and gas also from MENA. Uh, so, MENA region are is... We, are we seeing any demand thrust from the American markets? American markets, no. no. We don't uh, address the American market either in the DI because they have a different... Uh, Socket design and large dia going to America is a we have a freight disadvantage. So American market is available to us only for our seamless uh, and stainless. Plus now with hunting the premium uh, products or CTG products in large dia and DI not address US market. Okay, that's very helpful. Uh, thanks a lot, sir. Uh, all the best for the future. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question of the day. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vikas Singh for closing comments. Over to you, sir. On behalf of Philip Capital, I would like to thank Ginger for Management for giving us the opportunity to host the call. And I would hand over to Neeraji for his closing remark. Uh, thank you all very much. Uh, we are um, very encouraged by the kind of response that we are seeing from uh, all the stakeholders. So, thank you very much. We will continue our good work. We will continue the momentum. We will continue to work hard and hope to see you next quarter. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very much, sir. On the behalf of Philip Capital India Private Limited, that concludes the conference call. Thank you for joining us. And you may now disconnect your lines.